In this video we share Garabandal visionary Conchita and the warning. Garabandal is a small village of around 300 people located in a mountainous and ruggedly beautiful region of northern Spain. On the evening of June 18, 1961, four girls were playing on the outskirts of the city, 11-year-old Maria Cruz Gonzalez and three 12-year-old girls named Conchita Gonzalez, Maria Dolores Marzón, and Jacinta Gonzalez. Despite their similar surnames, none of them were related. Suddenly, they heard a loud noise, like thunder, and they saw the Archangel Michael. In the following days, the Archangel appeared in the same place, announcing them that on July 2nd they would see the Madonna. First meeting with the Madonna. At 6 in the evening of July 2nd, 1961 in the presence of a crowd of spectators, the girls went into ecstasy and saw the Madonna, accompanied by two angels, one of whom was Saint Michael. The girls described the Madonna this way. Our Lady was dressed in a white robe with a blue mantle and a crown of golden stars. Her hands are thin. There is a brown scapula on her right arm, except when she carries the baby Jesus in her arms. Her hair, a deep hazel color, is parted in the center of her. Her face is long, with a nice nose. Her mouth is very pretty with slightly thin lips. She looks like an 18-year-old girl. She is quite tall. There is no voice like hers. No woman is like her, neither in her voice nor in her face nor in anything else. The girls spoke to the Virgin with the simplicity of children who speak in a familiar way with their mother. We were telling her, they said, our homework, how we were going in the meadows, and she smiled at the little things we said to her. After this first apparition, the Madonna appeared numerous times, sometimes several times a week, during 1961 and 1962. The four girls did not always experience the apparition together, sometimes the Madonna appeared only at one, two or three of them. When the girls saw the Madonna, they immediately knelt down, oblivious of the pain and the knees hitting sharp stones with a loud noise, a careful medical examination by various doctors showed no signs of injuries to the knees. Their facial expressions suddenly change, completely absorbed in the rapture. Doctors and various witnesses subjected them to various tests while they were in a state of ecstasy, they did not react to stings, burns or beatings. Attempts to distract them proved futile, powerful beams of bright light were focused on their eyes, but they also didn't flicker, blink or show any signs of discomfort, powerful lights that doctors said under normal circumstances would cause permanent damage to the eyes. On the contrary, their eyes remained wide open, with a look of deep, intense joy. These ecstasies lasted from a few minutes to several hours, with the girls completely motionless in unbalanced positions, heads tilted back, eyes turned up, kneeling on rocks and rough terrain. Many eminent doctors have studied the events and visited the girls during the apparitions. After years of observing, a pediatric specialist has attested that girls have always been completely normal and that ecstasies are not part of any known psychological or physiological phenomenon. Dr. Ricard Puncernau, a well-known neuropsychiatrist from Barcelona, stated, faced with these facts it is difficult for the doctor to give a purely natural explanation. From a strictly scientific point of view, the possibility of a supernatural cause in all these phenomena. Dr. Gasca Ruiz and Dr. Ortiz Gonzalez, who have also studied the phenomena, declared that to keep quiet would be a real scientific cowardice on our part. As with most modern apparitions of Our Lady, there were many who did not believe in apparitions. For this reason the four girls continually asked the Blessed Virgin and Saint Michael to perform a miracle to convince those who still did not believe in the visions. Their request was granted. On June 22, 1962, Saint Michael told Conchita that on a date designated by the Virgin she would give her communion and this time her host would be visible on our tongue. The girls testified that Saint Michael brought them communion on numerous occasions since the beginning of the visions, although these were not visible to bystanders. A few days later, Conchita learned from Our Lady that on July 18 the little miracle of the host would take place and that she had to announce it 15 days in advance. When the time came to announce the expected miracle, 
she wrote numerous letters inviting people to come to Garabandal to witness the miracle. The parish priest, Father Valentin, who doubted that the phenomenon would occur, prevented her from writing many more letters. Despite this, the news of the expected miracle had already spread far and wide and many people from different parts of Spain began preparing to be in Garabandal on July 18. On the day of the event, Conchita Gonzalez knelt in a village street in the midst of a large crowd of pilgrims who had headed to Garabandal to witness the promised miracle. Suddenly, a white and shining host appeared on the girl's tense tongue. The event was captured on film. Pepe Diaz, the village mason, was a close observer and one of those who gave direct testimony of the miracle. I didn't take my eyes off the girl, Conchita, she started talking, praying, and then she smiled and smiling she opened her mouth and put out her tongue very naturally. She extended her tongue, not just a little, but quite a lot, and when I saw that tongue so perfectly exposed, I had a terrible feeling of disaster. I was barely 18 inches away from her face and sight of her tongue, protruding and bare, gave me a terrible feeling of failure, I, who so hoped. Conchita held her tongue out like that for about a minute. And while I was there, my eyes riveted on that desperately exposed tongue, then something incredible happened. Without moving your eyes for a split second, suddenly and distinct host, precise and well-formed, it miraculously appeared on Conchita's tongue. I can attest that from the moment Conchita stuck out her tongue, he didn't make a single movement, neither with his mouth nor with his tongue, not a single muscle in his face moved. The tongue was well out and naked and suddenly the host was there. I didn't see how it got there. It was instant. I can't even say how, the host arrived in a split second. It was right there. The first formal message from Our Lady was given to the girls on July 4, 1961, and publicly announced on October 18. Here is the message. We have to make many sacrifices, do a lot of penance and frequently visit the blessed sacrament. But first, we have to lead a good life. If we don't, we will be punished. The cup is already filling up, and if we don't change, a very great punishment will come upon us. The second formal message was given much later, towards the end of the apparitions. The Blessed Virgin told Conchita on January 1, 1965 that the Archangel St. Michael would appear on June 18, and deliver a message on her behalf. The message was as follows. Since my message of October 18 has not been respected and has not been made known to the world, I warn you that this is the last. Before, the cup was filling up. Now it is overflowing. Many cardinals, Many bishops and many priests are on the way to perdition and bring many souls with them. Less and less importance is given to the Eucharist. By your efforts, you should turn away the wrath of God. If you ask for forgiveness with a sincere heart, he will forgive you. I, your mother, through the intercession of Saint Michael the Archangel, ask you to amend your life. You are now getting the last warnings. I love you very much and I don't want your suffering. Pray sincerely and we will fulfill your requests. You should make more sacrifices. Think of the Passion of Jesus. Conchita was warned by the Madonna on January 1, 1965 of a divine warning that would precede the great miracle. The warning will be seen and experienced by all people around the world, and will be a direct and supernatural work of God. It will take place before the great miracle on a date unknown to Conchita, and its purpose is to give people the opportunity to change their lives. Conchita wrote. The warning comes directly from God and will be visible to the whole world and from anywhere where people are. It will be like the revelation of our sins, and it will be seen and heard by all, believers and non-believers, regardless of their religion. It will be seen and heard in all parts of the world and by every person. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.